Hi, I'm Karen Self, and I'm here today to talk to you about wild silk. I spent 30 years researching in the jungles of India to find out what is wild silk. We are familiar with the kind of silk that we wear every day, but there's a whole other kind of silk that comes from different kinds of silkworms. And we'll take a look at those later on. And they produce beautiful colors from mother nature, like this golden silk, which is called Muga. And then there's a white silk that comes from another wild silkworm called Erie. And then there's this very special uh, brown and beige and gray colored silk. Look at all the colors of these cocoons. Aren't they amazing? And that's called tussar or tussa silk. Now, wild silk is so special because it's raised totally out in the forest. We as human beings have tried to domesticate these guys. Now, this one is semi-domesticated uh, for many years, but both the Muga and the Tessa caterpillars have refused because their genetic makeup tells them that they need to crawl constantly in search of food. So we've tried to domesticate them like the white, white silkworms and it doesn't work, they just die. So they have to be out in the forest and their caregivers or rears live out there with them. They have to be out there with slingshots and mud balls. And this one fellow we saw had a sling. It had a little pocket in it and a rock and he whizzed it around his head and let it fly and he picked off a crow. Now, out in the forest, there's snakes and there's rodents and birds, lots of birds. So, and there's even bears, bears. So there's lots of things that are out there to get at these silkworms because they're huge. The diameter of my thumb, about this long, all different colors, uh, green, blue, yellow. And so the predators have something really big to feed on. Um, and why are we concerned about wild silk? Because it is something that has been done by the indigenous people in the eastern part of India for thousands of years. And it's still what they do. It's how they make their living. It's part of their uh, cultural uh, traditions as well, as well as their spirituality. So it's keeping them living in their traditional lifestyle. And it's important for us to understand not only about wild silk, but why it's important for us to support it. Um, and that is what I have done for the last 30 years been out there meeting the people, seeing how they raise the silkworms in the forest, and then how they release the yarn from the cocoons. And we'll have a look at that in some other videos. And if you want some more information, you can go to In Search of Wild Silk by Karen Selk.